Ever since man started to look up at the sky, trying to find our place in the universe, there has been one question that has troubled everyone. Where did we come from? How did life blossom here on Earth, but nowhere else, as far as we know? We have tried to approach the question with science, philosophy, and even religion, but life has not disclosed its identity anywhere else in the whole universe. The search for life outside our planet continues, and one way to look for life is by finding one of the most essential elements that is needed for it, water. Water is essential for many biological processes such as metabolism, digestion, and transport of nutrients. It also acts as a solvent, allowing chemical reactions to take place within cells. And water is needed for the growth and reproduction of most living organisms here on Earth. So where did water on Earth come from? The origin of water on Earth is still a subject of scientific research and debate. One theory is that water was brought to Earth by comets and asteroids. This theory suggests that these celestial bodies, which are rich in water ice, collided with the young Earth and deposited their water into the atmosphere and on the surface. The water then condensed and formed oceans and rivers. But how true is this theory? To find out, we would need to land a probe on a comet. Don't worry though, we already have. Yes, we are talking about ESA's Rosetta mission and what it discovered there proved scientists wrong. Welcome to Lab 360, it's time to explore. ESA's Rosetta mission was the first to rendezvous with a comet, the first to follow a comet on its orbit around the sun, and the first to deploy a lander onto a comet's surface. The mission was filled with such dramatic incidents that it has all the ingredients to be adapted into a Hollywood movie. The European Space Agency also made a short film on it, called Ambition the Film. The link to the video is in the description below. Originally, the Rosetta was a mission to target Comet 46B Werdenen, but due to several problems with the Ariane 5 launch vehicle, the mission was redirected to 67P Churyumov Gerasimenko. But reaching the comet was not going to be easy, as it would require a series of gravity assist maneuvers around the Earth, Mars, and a few other comets in the asteroid belt before making it to 67P. Now get this, Rosetta was powered by solar energy, so without the sun, the craft could sustain for only 70 hours. And that's why, in June 2011, Rosetta was placed in hibernation, as it made its way beyond the orbit of Jupiter, where there was no solar energy to power the vehicle. And then, the wait began. Tick tock, tick tock. On January 20th, 2014, Rosetta's internal clock awakened the spacecraft and sent a signal back to Earth that all was well. Now about 9 million kilometers from its primary target, Rosetta began its final race to Comet 67P. On August 6, 2014, at a distance of about 405 million kilometers from Earth, Rosetta finally rendezvoused with the comet as it completed the last of 10 maneuvers to adjust velocity and direction. The time for landing had come. And trust me when I say this, the drama has only begun. Comet 67P is a textbook example of a contact binary, which means that we see it as it is today, was created by the slow speed collision of two separate comets, each once an independent and fully formed object. This also means that finding a landing site was not going to be easy on a contact binary due to its rubber duck shape. Rosetta's first objective then became to map the comet and identify a landing site, which was found near the smaller of the comet's two lobes. Now, Rosetta was not going to land itself. It acted as a mothership for another probe called Philae, which was going to land on 67P and examine the four kilometers long world. But just before the planned landing on November 12th, controllers identified a problem in Philae's active descent system thruster, which was to provide thrust to prevent the spacecraft from bouncing off the surface. ESA was running out of time. 
a decision had to be made quickly. They moved forward with a landing, now relying only on harpoons to keep the spacecraft moored. The two spacecrafts separated, initiating Filet's seven-hour descent to the comet at an extremely slow speed. It is interesting to note here that the gravity of the comet is extremely weak. So weak that if you jumped on its surface, you'd shoot yourself up into space. A photo signal confirming the touchdown arrived at Earth about 28 minutes after the actual event. ESA was ecstatic, but they didn't realize that something had gone terribly wrong. The harpoons did not fire, and the fillet probe landed and immediately bounced off the surface. The European Space Agency sent multiple commands to it, but the probe kept floating in space, one kilometer from the surface. It was later determined that Filet had actually landed three times on the comet over the course of two hours before coming to rest. Later analysis showed that all three of the methods meant to secure Filet to the comet had faced problems. The ice screws, which were designed for soft materials, did not penetrate the hard surface of the Agilkia region. The thruster failed to fire due to a problem with a seal and the harpoons didn't fire due to an electrical problem. As a result, Filet bounced several times before settling down about one kilometer away from its intended landing site in an area known as a bitus, which was obscured from proper sunlight, which meant that now it could only work with its batteries. All of Filet's instruments were activated for data collection, but for a short period, ESA controllers did not know the disposition of the lander because it went into hibernation. On November 14, 2014, contact was re-established with Filet, after which its data was transferred to the mothership. Filet's primary battery drained and contact was lost on November 15. By this time, it had operated independently for 64 hours, including 57 hours on the surface. And on the 30th of September 2016, the Rosetta spacecraft ended its mission by crashing in the comet's mad region. So what did we find on the surface? In the atmosphere of the comet, it detected the presence of molecules containing carbon and hydrogen. Sixteen organic compounds were detected, four of which were seen for the first time on a comet, including acetamide, acetone, methyl isocyanate, and propionaldehyde. But what shocked everyone is that the Rosetta mission found unexpectedly high concentrations of molecular oxygen in its atmosphere. Combine hydrogen and oxygen and we get water. So, did water on Earth come from comets? We have only mapped two comets till now for water, Comet Hale-Bob and 67P. As it turns out, the water vapor's deuterium ratio to hydrogen is significantly different from Earth's. And as you can see here, data from the mission suggests that water on Earth did not come from comets. Rosetta, meanwhile, took an extraordinary video of dust particles and cosmic rays shooting off in different directions at the night side of the comet. Isn't this a sight to behold? 67P is currently 600 million kilometers away from Earth. Light takes 34 minutes and 20.3157 seconds to travel from the comet to arrive to us. And while the mission ended in 2016, both Rosetta and Filet remain on the surface of the comet. I don't know about you, but this gives me goosebumps. What do you guys have to say? Drop in your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Lab360 because together we will explore